The next lens I'm going to talk about is the 40 to 150 millimeter. And if you put a 1.4 converter on it, at the minimum focus, this will give you a magnification ratio of about 0.8 life size. Now, if you're not familiar with magnification ratios, think of it as fractions. If you had 1 colon 2, make that 1 over 2, half-life size. 1 colon 4, 1 over 4, 1 fourth life size. 1 to 1, 1 colon 1, life size. 2 colon 1, twice life size. And with a converter, with the converter, we can get 0.8 magnification at the minimum focus with this lens. That's incredible. Well, how can it get any better than that? The 300 millimeter lens. This is the equivalent of 600 millimeters. Imagine with a full frame camera holding 600 millimeters like this. Well, with a 1.4 converter, you're at probably about 0.8 magnification. The minimum focus on this is about five and a half feet, maybe 5.6 feet. 600 millimeter at 5.6 feet. You have a big magnification right there, enough that a butterfly, like a monarch, probably would not fit in the frame. But if you put a 2x teleconverter on this lens, you now have a equivalent of a 1200 millimeter lens that focuses to five and a half 5.6 feet. So something like a uh, an insect about as big as my thumbnail here would practically fill the frame. My, this whole part of my thumb would fill the frame. That's incredible. So you can do macro work at five and a half feet. And with the focus stacking, you can have all that depth of field. So I love this lens. This is my favorite lens. If I only had one, it would probably be this because of the wildlife and with the 1.4 making it an 840 or a 2X making it a 1200. I have everything. Now let's get into the meat of this and that is about exactly how to get the best out of our focus stacking. Now when you do your test, you don't have to be all fancy with things. I just use some little Avery labels and I've written down what my various settings were so that I would be able to check with the pictures on the computer afterwards and I knew exactly what I was doing. So, for example, that's f22 at a focus differential of one and three shots. And then what I did is I put it right by the subject so there'd be no question as to uh, exactly what settings I was using. Now, for my test, I actually had the camera position kind of like where I'm looking, uh, that camera position looking at me. So we have the background and you see all the pictures back here. And I want you to pay attention to the fact that as we use different lenses, our angle of view is going to con continually constrict. So eventually you might only have a gap between this spot here or here in the field of view, but our subject, which is going to be my little crocodile here, which is about uh, about four and a half inches, seven inches in total. We're gonna to go from the nose to the end of the tail here. That's gonna be our subject. Now, I'm not at the same working distance for each shot. When I'm using the seven to 14, I'm gonna be about that close. When I'm using the 12 to 100 at 12 millimeter, I'm also very, very, very close. But when I'm using a longer lens, I might be four feet away. And I ended up, I think, being something like 13 feet away or so for my 300 millimeter and the 2X. So I'll be showing you the pictures and the angle of view, and we'll be talking about that. And like I said, all those things are actually in the ebook with a very, very lengthy and thorough explanation as to exactly what I was doing. So for the first shot, I'm using my 7 to 14 millimeter at minimum focal length at 7 millimeters. 
And you can see there's a, a lot of background in the image, but the working distance was literally about one inch from the camera. When I then went to the 12 to 100 millimeter, my working distance was about two inches from the front of the lens. And the angle of view is a little reduced. You don't see as many of the prints in the background as you did in the first shot. I then went to my 60 millimeter. And you can see now that virtually all the prints have been eliminated except for one. And my working distance now is 14 and a half inches away. Next, I went to my 40 to 150 millimeter lens and I put the 1.4 converter on it. So it really became the equivalent of a 420 millimeter lens. And now my angle of view is really reduced. It's just that gap between those two prints. So let's go on to the next lens, the 300 millimeter. And remember, that's the equivalent of 600. And I put a 1.4 on it, so it's the equivalent of 840 millimeters. For this, I was about 9.8 feet away, in contrast to 45 inches for the last one, the 40 to 150 with the 1.4 converter. I then went to the 300 millimeter with the 2x converter. I was over 13 feet away for this shot. You can see the angle of view is now really restricted. And all you see there is the background of, uh, which is one print, I think it's the lion print. Now with that same combination of 300 millimeter and 2X converter, remember that's now the equivalent of 1200 millimeters. I moved in to the minimum focusing distance, which gave me, I think, a lens to subject distance of uh, about 45 inches or so. Uh, the minimum focus is five and a half feet, thereabouts. And then with the length of the lens and the camera, it ended up to be a little bit closer. But you can see that now only the head of that crocodile fills the frame. But here would be a perfect example of using the focus stacking so that you'd have the snout through the eye in focus.